Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In this video, let's see how we can transform our After Effects animation with a couple simple styles and effects. This is my animation before I apply everything in this video, and this is it after. Let's jump right in. First, let's talk about the animation parts. I'll show you how I animated this whole scene here. It looks complex, but it's actually quite simple to set up. Now we have two different animation in our composition. The first one is this green square coming in. Let's play this one. Coming from the left with some overshoots. And then the second one is a green square coming from the top to the center of the composition. And these are the two basic animation that we have. First thing, we need to drop this yellow square underneath the green square and then we need to move this one further let's see the first animation we have the yellow square coming in that's good and then we're going to position this green square somewhere around here to have it come down and then once they go past the yellow square i'm going to cut this yellow command shift d on the keyboard to cut this yellow square and then just move this one down to the final position i want it to be closer to this green one just underneath the green square and then let's go to this parent button drag a link parent it to the green square now we will have this animation here we have this yellow coming in and then the green is going to push the yellow down like this and now we just need a null object layer new and then let's do a null object let's cut it shorter position it right in the center of the composition and we need a rotate animation let's go back to our main comp and then let's copy the keyframe of this rotation animation let's paste it in command v hit u on the keyboard this is our rotation animation for the null object once the two square settles i want this null object to control the rotation of these two layers so since my yellow layer is already parent to the green layer so i just need to parent this green layer to the null object once i do that let's see what the animation looks like we're going to have this null object rotating the two squares that's good and then the next thing we want to do is we can duplicate the green square remember we had the green square coming down from the top we're going to duplicate it command d and then we're going to delete the null from this new green layer and move it to the top of the layer command shift rest square bracket now we're going to do another square coming down it doesn't have to be green in this case we can do maybe a different color let's do purple fill so we're going to have a purple square coming down we can change the color to a purple color something like this and then we have the purple square coming down once I go past the two I can cut these two layers select the two squares and then command shift D to cut it and then move it over on top of the null object let's call this one rotation one and then we can move these two layers down to position it here and then make sure we use the parent button to parent the two new squares to the purple square and now let's see what the animation looks like it's going to push the two square down and now we just need to copy this null do the same thing command d move this null over here and we need to parent the purple square to the null and for the null object this time, let's see, hit U on the keyboard. Instead of 180 degrees, we can do maybe 270. And now we have this side, and then we can just duplicate another layer. Repeat the process for the first two steps, and then we're gonna get another a square coming down and then we can keep rotating with a null object going down with another square after everything lands we can just use another null object 
at the end to do a rotation and then we can go inside each square layers hit you on the keyboard we can manipulate the size property and then the roundness and make it go shrinking smaller and smaller becoming a circle and then rotating with a null object controlling it so that's the whole animation we have there's a few ways you can add gradient to your layers. In this case, since we have a very simple shape, I'm using gradient fill to add a subtle gradient color to my object. It's super easy to control. Another way is to add it through the layer styles. It's similar to the gradient fill, it gives you more option to control your gradient color. After you have the gradient color that you like, you can just simply copy it and apply it to any other layers you like and change the color as you see fit. It can really help add some details to your project and give it a more professional and polished look. Next, if you have some animated simple shape elements and you want to add some fun motion trail to your shapes or you simply want to apply the squash and stretch animation principle, the easiest way to do this is to use the echo effect. This technique is fairly simple to use. Let's duplicate the original layer. All you need is to go select the layer you want to apply echo to, go inside the effects and presets panel and search for echo effect. You can then adjust the setting to make the echo time really small like 0.002 like we have here and then change the number of echoes. We can give it a bigger smear with more number of echoes and smaller smear with less number of echoes. Let's use 30 copies here. Now we can get the stretch animation to whatever layer we apply it to. It adds another dimension to the complexity to your animation and make it fun and interesting to look at. Before we go to the next technique, please give me a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. So we added echo effects in the last step. It's looking pretty good if that's the style you're going for. However, in this case, we'd like to add more effects and style out the animation even more. I'd like to make the smear effect into an outline so we only have an outline of the shape trailing behind. Almost like a motion trail. So to do that, let's find the find edge effect in the effects and presets panel add it on the smear layer. Let's hit invert. Now we can add a stroke onto this layer. Here's what the video looks like now with the gradient color, outline smear and trails. Pretty complex, right? Let's keep going. Now let's talk about the glow effects. Glow effects is essential to what we're doing in this project. You can add the After Effects default glow effects from the effects and presets panel. However, most of the cases it's not looking as nice. That's why we're using the deep glow plugin for this project. It's not a free plugin, but it does give you a much better and premium results to your video. This video is not sponsored, but it's worth the price if you're working on a lot of the glow animations. In this case, we have so many layers that we want to add glow to. However, we don't want to control them individually. So the easiest way to do this is to add an adjustment layer on the very top and we can apply deep glow to the adjustment layer. So all the layers underneath it will be affected. This way we can just use one single layer to control the glow effect of 10 or 20 layers underneath it. Finally, we need to talk about chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is the optical effect that occurs when different colors of light travel at different speeds when passing through a lens. Different colors will end up at different positions. This causes a blurred or color distorted image. Now, as a motion designer, we can add it to our project and make it look not so clean and kind of simulate some real life experience when we see things. We can achieve this by using the Deep Glow plugin. Over here in the Deep Glow settings, you can find the style setting and then there's a chromatic aberration. We can turn it on here. And once I turn it on, we can zoom in to see what it does. You can see over here, there's a bit of offset between the three colors. If I choose the different settings here, the offset is going to be different. Now we just need to choose something that we think looks best for this animation here. I think the red and blue looks pretty good. I want to check this scene here and also I want to check the last scene. Maybe somewhere around here. Let me zoom in. I think the red and blue looks best for me. We can also change the amount if I drag this one bigger. And you can see there is almost like an echo effect to it. I just want to keep it at 0.25% and that will keep our chromatic aberration subtle. And that's how we adjust the chromatic aberration within the deep glow setting. 
Last thing, let's talk about texture. You can always make a flat layer look super interesting by adding some texture. There's multiple ways that you can do this. First, you can just apply a simple noise to your adjustment layer and just to add a little bit of grain to the overall composition. I usually find that 5-10% to works pretty well. You could also add some noise to your layer styles in the glow setting, but if you want to take everything a step further, you can add animated textures. I've talked about how to add animated texture in the other video. You can watch the video by clicking the link in the corner. Since we don't need animated texture in this project, I will just add a simple noise and leave it there. Alright, now we finished styling our animation. Let's see what it looks like now. That's it with this video. You can find a link to download the animated project in the description below. Please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.